In this video, we'll be looking at a monthly payment formula for calculating a monthly payment with a fixed interest rate on a loan for a specified term or number of years. I took this information from the Wikipedia page about mortgage calculator and found this formula for finding the fixed monthly payment for a fixed rate mortgage so that the interest and the loan principal is all paid off by the end of its term. And it's a pretty complicated formula, but we just need to make sure that we're using the variables properly and have the correct units and follow order of operations, and we'll get through this formula. You can see here at the bottom that the formula is written in two different forms. One uses a negative exponent and one does not, but these two equations are equivalent. And I prefer to use this one that does not use negative exponents. So I've just taken that formula. C will stand for the monthly payment. P is the loan principal, the actual full amount that's being borrowed. Capital N is the number of monthly payments in the loan. And R is going to equal the monthly interest rate. And we need to use that as a decimal number, not as a percent. For our first example, we're going to figure out the monthly payment for a $12,000 loan with a 1.5% annual percentage rate and a six-year term on the loan. First, we're going to determine what numbers we need to put in place of these variables. P equals the loan principal, and that is our $12,000 amount of the loan. Capital N is the number of monthly payments. Now notice that we have that it's a six-year term, but N must stand for the number of monthly payments. So this six-year term would be six years times 12 months per year. So we have a total of 72 months. Lastly, we need to find R, the monthly interest rate. We currently have the annual percentage rate, 1.5%. Now we know that we need to have this not as a percent, but as a decimal, so 0.015. But this is still yearly for the entire year. The A is for annual, and this formula requires a monthly rate which means we need to take our annual rate and divide it by 12 for the 12 months in the year. And that gives us 0 0.00125 for our monthly interest rate written as a decimal. Now we've got the quantities that we need to plug into this formula and really we just need to be cautious and follow order of operations and we'll get through this formula just very carefully. In the numerator, we have got P times R. Let's just pause there. So P12,000 times R, 0 0.00125. And now we have this quantity in parentheses, 1 plus R. Well, notice R over here is this decimal number that's less than 1. When we want to do 1 plus R, it's actually just going to be kind of natural for us to do. There's our one whole. So adding one to r is essentially just putting a one in front of this decimal number that we have for r. So we don't have to make that part more complicated than it needs to be. And we have an exponent, which is n. And n would be our 72 total payments for one, one per month for the six years. And now in the denominator, we've got this one plus r to the power of n again. Remember, that's what we just wrote up here. So no need to reinvent the wheel. That's 1.00125 to the power of 72. And then we've got a big minus 1 after that. OK, so we have to think about order of operations to evaluate this big expression on this side here to calculate C, the monthly payment. We want to look for parentheses first, but in each case here, these three sets of parentheses, there's no operations inside. We just have, I, use, I chose to use them here to kind of keep things looking clear about what my individual numbers are. I've got lots of zeros and some decimal points. So I use the parentheses just to separate the numbers. And we know that it's multiplication going on when we don't actually see the symbol or when we know up here P times R and R times this quantity, 1 plus R to the N. So lots of multiplications going on. But... We know that after checking out each set of parentheses, and we don't see anything inside, that next would be exponents. So we have two locations where we're doing 1.00125 to the power of 72. 
Now, there are a few ways where we can keep this answer as exact as possible, but it takes having some good calculator skills. So instead, we're going to use this kind of rule of thumb where when we need to round our decimal numbers, we're going to keep at least four decimal places. Uh, so, and this would, what I mean by that is behind the decimal point, four numbers that are not zeros, that, that begin after all the zeros. Let's just get into it and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So in a calculator, let's evaluate 1.00125 to the power of 72. And just for a moment, let me write out as much as my calculator is showing me of this result. Now the more decimal places that we can keep, and in fact if we can keep this actual answer stored in the calculator, that would be the path to have as exact an answer as possible. But it sometimes makes it pretty difficult as we're going through many other operations in this formula. So my rule of thumb is that we're going to make sure that we retain four numbers behind the decimal point, and you can't start counting until you get past all the zeros. So this, here's our decimal point, right behind it is zero, that doesn't count. There's a nine, a four, a one, and then a one. So this is what I want to keep. It's just a kind of safe compromise between keeping all the numbers to be as exact as possible versus cutting it off and rounding it too soon. So this, I, I found, keeps me on track pretty decently, but you want to be cautious about when it's okay to have an approximate answer and when you really need to be as exact as possible. So anyways, we're going to proceed with 1.09411 as the result of doing these two exponential expressions. Okay, so I'm going to do some rewriting to get rid of some of this extra work here and put back in this result. So here's what our formula looks like now where we've replaced the exponential parts with that result 1.09411 and we know that we're kind of approximating at this point. We just chopped off some decimal numbers. But now we're going to continue with order of operations, no other exponents. So looking at the numerator here, we have just multiplies. So we're going to multiply all these numbers together. And in the numerator, this will give us 16.41165. Now in my calculator, that's all that my calculator shows. So when I see the ending, I'm going to try to just keep that whole thing. I know I just talked about this rule of keeping four places, and I'll do that when I seeing you know eight or nine decimal places a very large number but if I see that it ends if I see the ending I'm just gonna keep the whole thing and in the denominator we just have this 1.09411 subtract 1 so that's just gonna take us down to 0 0.09411 and now we're ready for this last step to divide it out and this gives a result that is about, remember we're talking about dollars and cents here, um, a monthly payment. So I'm going to round and look at $174. And when I round, it's going to be 39 cents. So that's our monthly payment on a $12,000 loan with this 1.5% APR. And it's a six-year loan. Now here's an example for you to try. Um, pause the video and we're going to go, be going through some pretty similar steps, figuring out what quantities, what numbers to use in place of P, the principal, R, the monthly interest rate, and N, the number of monthly payments. So pause the video for a few minutes and try to work through this problem and then restart and we'll look through this answer together. So given this information, we know that P, our principal, is 180,000. Our APR, 3.75, which would be 0 0.0375 as a decimal, that's still annual, so we need to divide by 12 to get our monthly rate. And lastly, the number of monthly payments. It's 30 years, so we need to multiply by 12 to determine how many months this is. That gives us 360 months in 30 years. Now we'll begin to substitute these numbers into our formula. 180,000 principal times the rate 0 0.003125 times 1 plus r 1.003125 to the power of n 360. 
in the denominator we've got the 1 plus r again 1.003125 and to the power of n 360 and subtract 1. So we're sticking to order of operations let's do these exponents first 1.003125 to the power of 360 and I get a result that's about 3.07 so let me rewrite this whole formula but replacing this exponential part with our new result 3.07482 it's looking like what I'm gonna go with now in your calculator you might see 3.074818 but I don't want to just chop when I chop I want to make sure that I'm rounding also so this would be 4818 there would be an 8 back behind that 1 so I'm rounding it up to a 2 that's why that is ending with a 2 there and let's take care of the denominator and in the denominator 3.07482 minus 1 next let's take care of the numerator which is just multiplication so we're gonna multiply these numbers right through 180,000 times point zero zero three one two five times three point zero seven four eight two I get 1,729.58625. In the denominator, 3.07482 minus 1 takes us down to 2.07482. And then lastly, we can divide this through, and that will give us our monthly payment. And it equals about $833, and when I round, 61 cents.